Now we're going to look at the services offered at Internet Exchange Point. The most important feature is that the services should not compete with the member ISPs. So for example, web hosting at an exchange point is a bad idea because members will do web hosting as well. Of course, if all the members agree, then it's all right. Exchange point operations should make performance and throughput statistics available to members. There are many tools available, for example, Libra NMS, which will produce throughput graphs from member or public information. In fact, it's rare for this information to be made public apart from an overall traffic level at the apart from an overall traffic level at the exchange point switch. Individual member traffic performance is usually considered confidential to each member. Other services include a root name server. And any cast instances of many of the root name servers are now present at many of the exchange points around the world. As we improve the resiliency of the DNS system, it's quite common for exchange points to host one or two root name servers today. Quite often we see the country top level domain DNS at exchange points as well. The main exchange point in a country could host the country's top level DNS. For example, the Swedish TLD is hosted at the net node exchanges in Sweden, as well as at other instances of net nodes infrastructure around the world. Of course, the exchange point could offer to back up other countries CCTLD DNS as well. There are many operators that will provide resiliency for country top-level domains around the globe. And we also see the general TLD DNS servers being hosted at many exchange points around the world also. .com, .net, .org are in many parts of the world. Exchange points usually offer what's called a route server. This helps scale exchange points by providing easier BGP configuration and operation for participants who have open peering policies. We will look at the technical details of a route server in a short while. Exchange points will also offer looking glasses. This is one way of making the route server routes available for global view, for example, through www.traceroute.org. It can be public access, which is most common, or it could be member-only access. It's entirely up to the exchange point membership how they make the looking glass information available. We very often see content redistribution and content caching being located at or very close to internet exchange points. Various providers offer these services, and we often see broadcast media positioned very close to IXs as well. The idea is to get the best round trip time, fastest access to the end users who are going to be viewing this content. It's very common to see network time protocol sources being located at exchange points. We could locate a stratum one time source, for example, a GPS receiver, atomic clock, and so forth at the exchange point itself. We may also see a routing registry on offer at some exchange points. And this is used to register the routing policy of the IX membership. If the exchange point is going to offer services to members, these services need transit access. And the transit is not going to be provided across the exchange point fabric. Transit is usually arranged with one or two of the exchange point members. And the cost of this is shared amongst all members. It's part of the cost of operation of the exchange point. So IXs should consider this carefully. Should the services be located at the IXP itself? And if so, how to arrange and pay for the transit to those services? Or should the services be hosted by members and shared with the other members? 